Hello viewers, me and team here, and welcome to the Hall of Fame Challenger series on Let's Play Civilization 4. We are going to be continuing on to challenge 5-6. This is a domination win on Emperor difficulty, and the area is a little bit strange. Industrial era. I'm not really used to the advanced era starts. I think I've only played industrial like once ever, other than what I'll be doing for this game. So this is going to be an interesting learning experience. Also to note that we are forced to play on Pangea, which is probably the best uh, map for this anyway, with the exception of maybe like Great Plains or something, I don't know. Epic game speed, so this is going to be useful for war, they wanted to give us some help there, so a lot of people are going to finish nicely on this. And the opponents are all English and Russian <laughs> leaders in the game. So, first of all... We can pick anybody we want, except for we can't pick anybody who has Cossacks or uh, Redcoats, because you can't duplicate leaders in Hall of Fame, it's illegal. And the other thing is that we are going to be facing lots of Cossacks and Redcoats. <laughs> Great. Um, also noting before I start the game, this is the actual Civ Fanatics Hall of Fame page, rather than the Challenger Series page on the Civ Fanatics forums. So, you can take a look at the standings here. I was recently 6th, but a couple of game submissions bumped me back down to 9th, and uh, I'm about halfway through, so I should have more points than 28 at the end. I'm expecting I'll eke into a top 5 finish. I don't think I can beat Be Cool, who is uh, looking poised to repeat his Challenge 4 victory. But also notice that on these 10 game challenge things, the record for um, people actually completing the series is 5, back in, I think, Challenge 2. Let's have a look. Yeah, well, but Challenge 2 only had um, six games. So and uh, for a 10-game series, only uh, four people in any given season have ever finished all 10 games. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, uh, if you finish all the games, you tend to make top five. Uh, Colonel Mustard here in Challenge 4 maybe would have missed out on it, depending if he had a... Uh, low or high finish in game five but you can also check out the individual games then but we're on challenge five so and yeah you can see that i had not been active i was actually active in challenge one but never finished it i ran out of time well i mostly just lost interest um but now that i'm casting this i'm committed to finishing the challenger series so that should get me through it also um the most that i've ever done is seven games but i can easily play the entire thing in a week if i wanted uh, yeah, so, let's go. Let's play uh, Civilization IV Hall of Fame Challenger Series. Now, a couple things about the settings here. No Barbarians, because they're not required to be on, and they're just going to be a nuisance for the way I want to play this. Uh, some things about late era starts. Uh, and my strategy here is going to be divergent from a lot of others. First of all, I'm running Montezuma for the aggressive bonus to my Grenadiers and Rifles. Uh, grenadiers are, based on what I've read from other people's game, the uh, the unit to have in this map if you're rushing quickly. Catapults are useful too, as are rifles to cover you against cavalry. Now obviously against Cossacks, cavalry is not the best idea. We showed that in my Shaka Let's Play, didn't we? Yeah, that was really, really smooth. At least I still won that game. Anyway, um, other things. We could add additional sieves, and other people have done it and that will lower the domination land percentage by some degree and make it technically uh, easier so to strictly speaking you can win domination with less land however the problem with that is that we don't have any way to reliably take cities without teching uh, if we add leaders well let me rephrase that we it's not cheap for us to rush i don't think so i don't think adding civs is going to be useful now the uh, the draw to doing that is that cities are expensive to construct in the industrial area. Settlers are much more expensive than they normally would be. But I think even then, as long as I can harass the AI out of expanding on my land, <laughs> then uh, maybe I can make something happen here. So we're just going to play with the default six. Uh, high sea level to, to limit the amount of land, making sure we push the industrial button in. Other settings, lock modified assets because it's required, no vassal states. I don't see any benefit to having vassal states or permanent alliances in this game. So I'm not going to have either of those. And the usual no random events because I really hate random events in this game. But yeah, a permanent alliance, considering how many turns it takes just to get it started, 
and the fact that I would have difficulty uh, just getting a defensive pact or a shared war for enough turns before the game would stop being competitive, I don't see a point to leaving that eye on. So, alright, let's do this. Let's go into Let's Play Civilization 4 Challenger 6. Um, oh yeah, the spiritual side of Montezuma is going to help for civic switching in the opening turns. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do this well, because I don't even know what I start with technically. But, yeah. <laughs> Tied Renaissance music right away. Okay, so let's see what we start with here. Worker, worker. Get an explorer. Two explorers, two workers, two rifles. And do I get more than one settler? I get three settlers to two workers. So we're going to want to get workers put together right away. Um, and since we have the capability of using exploration, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's explore a little bit. Um, see, settling in place I don't like now because um, settling in place kind of screws up this placement, which I like. Oh, also, we don't have to worry about starting tech. In fact, we don't have to worry about tech. <laughs> we have rifling, we have chemistry, we could tech for steel, but look at the time, the time it's going to take. Even after I settle a city, that's going to be pretty long. I'll go ahead and click it, lacking any better options. So, settler one... I like here. It's riverside. Um, I can't don't have access to a levee, but um, it's freshwater, riverside, good production tiles, and a reasonably strong starting city. So we'll go there. Uh, rifle can move on to this hill to check out what's below here. Silver's a draw, draw. I mean, obviously, you can run any civic I want here. We'll think about that after I settle cities. For a change, viewers, I might be wanting to run serfdom. Emancipation, I might be forced to do it for happiness reasons, but I'm thinking I'd prefer either slavery or caste system over here, so there's some horse there. And uh, I guess the best I can do is this. So since borders will not expand instantly, getting my workers onto uh, tiles that can be improved or chopped immediately seems to be a good idea. I'll go ahead and start chopping with this very guy. Okay, and uh, I guess with this guy, I'm just going to take a little peek here. I mean, the, the explorer can finish scouting that direction. Not sure what I want to do with this third uh, settler. But I really don't see any point to leaving him in his current location. Um, this doesn't look particularly appealing to me with all the planes and fish. Uh, at this point, I have access to strong tiles right from go. Yeah, that's going to influence my settling decisions. So I think we'll start west here. And yeah, third rifle. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just send him this way. It's not like I have any real war, or any really attack threat on me with no barbarians until I declare on somebody. So, uh, in this turn, we get to see... Both, well, a couple things. We have to see how we're teching and that it'll be useless, I'm pretty sure. But we'll also get to see what happens when you settle a city. Because on these later era starts, things come with. Okay, so when you settle, you get three population instead of the usual one. You start with a palace. Well, not, not only in the first city. You start with granary, aqueduct, lighthouse, harbor, mark, forge, and market. So we don't get courthouses, although we can uh, make it there pretty quickly. The production rate is terrible, so uh, we're just going to... Uh, the tech rate is terrible, we're just going to turn that off. And yeah, look at the settler hammer cost. 500 hammers. I know it's epic speed, but ouch. <laughs> uh, workers are a huge draw here. We're going to want to get them set up right away. If I start with a worker, I can uh, improve the copper rather than moving first. I also can finish chopping into it, so that's a useful thing as well. 
Um, yeah, you just go down that way. You take a peek northwest, since I really don't have need for direct defenses. Okay. So this is not a bad second city site, but I will let this settler take it next turn. And where's the third one? There's gems. Might be able to make use of gems. Okay, and the other thing is... I think we will start off in serfdom, because we don't have any better tile improvements. Universal suffering just won't really do much for us. Representation will add some happiness. It's probably my best bet. I think we'll start in bureaucracy for the hammer bonus. Eventually, I'm probably going to want nationhood. Um, mercantilism until I can get trade routes. And uh, religions will be distributed randomly here after a few turns. I don't think it'll be enough uh, to give me trouble. So what I'm going to do here is just switch into free religion. It's low upkeep, um, slight science boost. There's no harm in switching anyway. It can't hurt me. So all these civics and no anarchy. I have a feeling that uh, even if I botch this and don't have a competitive time, that this uh, strategy will be useful to somebody who does. Because <laughs> it can be really good on uh, these kinds of settings. Alright, there's Peter. And same thing here. Gonna want workers. Do I really want to settle into the jungle? I'm not sure that's the strong option. Yeah, you know, the other thing I can do is just drop. Well, let's see if I lose that on seafood. Yeah, I could just drop my city back down here and use it as an engine. Is at this point your maintenance isn't as bad. Your cities start better developed and uh, you have access to better tile improvements so it's much less of a problem and uh, otherwise I think I might just want to consolidate my rifles and leave the exploration to my explorers chop okay so he's pretty close The other thing is the AI is not going to be the best at using its units. So I might just want to chop out some grenadiers really early on and go killing things. Because <laughs> if I can do that enough, um, I can probably seal off enough land for domination win right away. The record right now, as you saw, is like in the 1800s. So that's something to note. Okay, that explorer is going that way. Whatever, we'll just do that really need worker turns so we're just going to keep building workers and that's a good tile so we're going to go try and improve it yeah see now I might even be able to cheese ball him with my starting three rifles but whatever oh cool I wonder you will not trade world map but what you know what that's fine <laughs> if they're willing to go map for map I can probably do something with it and I'm probably gonna want these cities sooner rather than later and rifle I will just bring back home road there isn't very important just yet Culture in four turns there. Culture in <laughs> infinite turns there until I improve that. Okay. What else? Water mill is a decent number of hammers. I guess I should be using water mills. I can also build lumber mills, but I think the chops are more valuable immediately, just like they are in faster era starts. And everything else is just so-so. Okay.
I don't think I want to build a water mill just yet, though. Or do I have windmill bonuses too? I do. Hmm. Uh, until mines roll around, windmills are actually a decent deal. What I think I'll do here is build a windmill here, then build a water mill there, and then I can build a water mill here, and it'll still work. But I'll probably improve the corn first once that becomes available. So let's get this up to speed. And just same deal, just workers. As you notice, this isn't hurting my uh, this isn't hurting my income much at all. Hey, Kathy. I should open borders with everybody. I don't know why I've delayed doing so. And there we go. He got a religion at random. Dude, I get a religion. I did not. How about that? <laughs> oh, no, I got Christianity. Okay. Well, there you go. So I'll get a border pop here as well. Um, might want to actually invest in some missionaries. I can switch over into organized religion to take advantage of that. Oh, nope. I can stay in free religion and get border pops without spending hammers on border pops. Probably a good idea. And he's just going to have rifles. He doesn't have horse. That's useful information too. Prove that. Okay, the English are there. Come on now. Well, all right, we'll just be in position to improve the corn. How many workers do I have? Only three. Feels like I should have more. Oh, that's domestic. I have uh, four workers. Okay. Never mind. That's accurate then. Just go ahead and move here for the chop. Yeah, this guy, I can probably just sit him in Peter's land and see everything. There shall be peace in our time. And we shall open borders. I don't think she ever trades maps. Other English. Yeah. It's an inconvenient side effect of this map. You know that wasn't designer intent. <laughs> you know the designers just wanted to abuse the uh, unique unit problems here. So interestingly, I get border pops in all my cities. I still might want to build some missionaries though so I can take advantage of theology. Getting up to combat 3 or to combat 2 pinch on my units. Do I have military science? I do. Hi, Stalin. Okay, you'll have that done. Let's go... Does a water mill... No, water mills don't add food. I don't want to overdo the workers here. Barracks. Aggressive barracks are cheap. And I'm building workers in each of these cities. So what I think I'll do in a few turns is I'll go organize religion. And I got the religious spread, so I only need one missionary. Very handy. Very, very handy. Go ahead and watermill that. <laughs> Screw serfdom. But it's good for what it's doing right now, so... Also wait on a border pot before switching. And yeah, I'm running engineers because of mercantilism, not because of anything else. Let's see now. Barracks. <laughs> Mine. And, uh... Can I get away with a water mill here? I cannot, even though it's technically a riverside. Very interesting. I think what I'll do with you, actually, is road first, because I do need a 
connection anyway between my cities. I guess because it's a corner tile, you can't really watermill corner tiles. Here I'm hurting for food. And like I said, we'll go organized religion. Is bureaucracy still a good draw for me? I think for the moment that it is. So we'll do that. And we'll switch into Christianity. So we can build a Christian missionary. And then farm this tile for growth. Mine this tile for production. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, to say the least. Okay, good. Got that done. Do I want to make a sack altar? I probably do. Yeah, I think I'm good on workers and that I'm going to want to be building grenadiers from here out. Probably stay in mercantilism. And you just go up there. I thought I said I was going to wait for a border pop. Apparently I failed to recall that like a couple seconds later because I'm so attentive, especially when casting games. Hey, Vicky. And she will trade world maps. What do you want for this? No, I want to give you my map. Now what do you want it for this? It's only slightly less. Oh, there uh, goes any importance of scouting, huh? <laughs> oh well. Uh, next water mill location barely matters. We'll just drop it there. I guess my Christian missionary is out of moves. And you chop. Silver tile isn't that important. It is important for um, growth, but that's it. Do I need sack altars? I really don't think it's good to be investing in those just yet. If I need them, I'll build them quickly, but that's that. Yeah, 85 turns of tech steel, or I could try to peacefully expand, which would take an eternity. No, in this case, the Grenadiers are clear winners here. And we have like two rifles per city, so, you know, whatever. Guess I should hook up copper. It's not that important, but... Ooh, I could build Apostolic Palace, and it's not going to be that useful. So we'll go with Grenadier. Well, if you insist, Kathy. I'm sure you'll put it to great use. That's so threatening. <laughs> Go ahead and chop. And it might be actually best just to chop everything. And uh, forget about any infrastructure setup at all. Just chop out Grenadiers, take a city. Chop out Grenadiers, take a city. And then use their forests to continually chop out more reinforcements. I have have considered that approach. And I think it's a possibly viable one, so we'll see. Grenadier's posture is so awesome. <laughs> Alright. Well, at least my capital's not behind on worker turns here. It's doing well. You get these cities set up quickly. Still with the two rifles. Now, I don't know what kind of odds a Grenadier gets against a rifle in a city. Um, let's see. They'll uh, get 25% fortify bonus. And Grenadiers have 50% when attacking rifles. So, let me see here. Even with some city defense, they, they all, I'll need to lose some every time I take a city. But cities are so powerful in this format. Hmm, okay. And then rifles are a little bit more than cavalry cover. I might build some now and then, but that's it. 
Workshops can be decent, uh, certainly. Uh, what else can I build? I don't have metal for pikes or anything. Uh, cheap units to garrison. Oh shoot! Let's uh, let's stop playing like an idiot. Fortunately, I'm aggressive, so that's not going to be terrible for me. Oh, I've only built a few grenadiers. So yeah, just keep doing that. Yeah, look at that. That's uh, getting up nicely already. Could probably afford to uh, workshop that. Finally getting a border pop there. I don't know, he's getting grenadiers. Not cool, bro. Brotoss. Oh yeah, I have engineering too. Forget the perks of this kind of game sometimes. You start with all these advanced technologies. And just watermill everything. No. I want to thoroughly scout everybody, Stalin. Don't be so pushy. The other thing I could do is grenadiers plus uh, cavalry to cover the grenadiers. Because if I used uh, my own rifles to cover grenadiers, I would run into problems with uh, enemy redcoats. But redcoats are nothing special against cavalry. I do have to watch for opposing Cossacks, though, because then I wouldn't have any defense against that. I really need all three. I guess the point of this was to annoy us by making it harder. This is hilarious. It's barely, uh, better. In fact, it's arguably not better. Uh, I guess, um, the horse tile is still slightly better than a plains watermill, but these floodplain watermills are better than the horse tile. <laughs> it's craziness. And yeah, I think uh, serfdom's the way to go here for these later era stars. When you he kept saying me, hearing me say that serfdom sucks in late and in, uh, in ancient era starts, there's a reason I qualified it that way, and that's because it does not necessarily suck in later era starts. Uh, you get lots of improvements built, and what else would I be doing with these cities right now? Whipping them when they're growing under these kinds of tiles? No, no, I wouldn't be whipping this. That's crazy. One rifle. Man, I'd have the potential to punish that soon. <laughs> Apparently someone switched into Christianity too. Excellent. So yeah, workshops, watermills, windmills. Windmills are actually decent commerce too. Maybe I could get uh, steel. Nah, it's still too slow. I could also invest in catapults. And it might be worth my time to get a couple. Uh, with barrage and blow away defenses and use the occasional collateral against lots of defenders. I think that'll matter later. Let's go ahead and watermill this. That way I can use this uh, set to watermill that tile. No, I don't think so. Most of the continent's explored, by the way. Between the map trades and my two explorers, you really can get a feel for the map quickly. Go ahead and chop that. So now he's got two rifles there. Still only two rifles there. Got a grenadier and a worker. I can easily destroy his grenadiers though. Yeah, screw off. You're gonna die soon anyway. Think another grenadier or two there, and I will be good. Think just one more. I've already put off attacking too long, maybe. But oh well. Get the water mill. The workshops. Did I road this? Yeah. Windmills. <laughs> grow, grow, grow with hammers. <laughs> Replaceable parts at the start of a game definitely changes which tile improvements you use. Okay. And I guess we'll just row towards the Russians. Because what else am I going to do there? Not a lot. Most of my cities are good now. 
Could use a golden age, but eh. I alternatively could rush a wonder of some sort. Statue of Liberty, I still wouldn't be able to finish, though. That's probably a no-go. <laughs> Don't worry, troops, just passing through. <laughs> what else could I rush? I don't see anything useful. I don't see any point in saddling him. Like, what's good is that going to do? I could just rush Apostolic Palace. But that wouldn't really help me. It would be such a small portion of my actual hammers. Maybe I really should just settle him. I mean, what's the worst that's going to come of it? 47 turns for steel. Now 43 turns for steel. Now nah, we're just gonna keep this down. You know what I probably should have done now that I did something other than what I should have done was uh, Golden Age. <laughs> Golden Age would have been the best. Temporary boost of production is probably worth the most right here. So that's a bit of a misplay. Golden Age is probably the way to be. Nope. Hate me all you want. World's gonna hate anyway. Haters gonna hate anyway. Great Merchant coming my way. Great Merchant would have been decent. Oh well. We still have two rifles there. Yeah, okay. Time for a little bit of finger slippage. So, okay. And yeah, obviously we're just gonna move down like this. Now here I'm under risk of attack, so what I'm gonna do is take like a pinch grenadier. With combat two. And that should keep him off my case. And then I'll probably act uh, it doesn't matter. I'll move on to the defensive tile here. And then obviously I'm going to rely on the production from these cities to continue. Since my workers are out of things to do, too, um, this will also give them something new that they can try out. Weren't you roading over here? Okay. And yeah, I'll want to put a road here, too, for uh, Trade Network. <laughs> I think it's time I start leaving actual garrison behind as well. Interesting. Yeah, unfortunately hill cities are going to give me some grief. Everything will give me some grief. You go there. Yeah, maybe I should have just chopped Grenadiers from the start. And just used the uh, accelerator production of that. Uh, let's see what our combat two pinch Grenadiers can do. Oh my god. Yeah, I think I took the wrong approach to this game already. Uh, there's always next time. <laughs> this might be one of the games I redo, since it's novel for me anyway, so... Huh. Man, they didn't even bother with walls. Of course, walls would be silly in this era. I can even get good attack gods like this. Crossing a river. Worker steel, hee hee hee. It's good. You can use the extra workers. <laughs> oh jeez, I should have just done this instantly. Now I feel stupid. Well, live and learn, I guess. I didn't realize it would be such an utter joke to go stomping around on my opposition here. 
And the other thing it's time to do, aside from just going barracks, I'm not going to have to worry about gold or anything. And bureaucracy at this point, probably not the best. Okay, we're going to move up here. Because at this point, I think I have enough units to finish the war. Now, who to hit next? This guy lacks horse, so he's actually not that threatening. I guess we'll go after this English next. And so we can make this city happy again. And just road. Fortify. And yeah, same deal. We'll just be uh, workshopping, water milling, and the works. If I'm lucky, maybe he'll attack these catapults and throw away his units. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, do some masterful worker baiting as well. You have to be masterful about it, certainly. And yeah, since I'm not overly workshop reliant, I can get away with just staying in serfdom. I find that interesting. Okay, um, let's see now. Grenadier on defense against combat to pinch Grenadier. Straight up even fight. Oh man. And yeah, even with a, just a barracks, I can get winning odds against rifle defenders. Now what if I were attacking with rifles? Let me showcase that. Much worse. Grenadiers are awesome in this era. I'll have to keep that in mind. They are something I don't use enough, I think. At least not enough at parity. Alright. Let's click and clean. Can even use up one of those guys I built stupidly uh, for that. And now that I'm in Vassalage, I don't need to rely on anything like uh, my religion. So, maybe even that was a little bit silly. Maybe I should really just go Vassalage, Serfdom, and start with the Grenadiers. Okay. Yay. Barracks. <laughs> and cavalry will have winning odds defending against the grenadier, but they won't be gr the good odds. Won't be strong. Here I'll actually build a lumber mill. I think I do still need to actually build some roads connecting this. So after that water mill is finished. Chopping in the barracks, good. And lots of leftover troops too, man. This is good. This is the way I like it. And lots of chops. And look at these city placements. AI is stupid. Not that we didn't know this. Okay. I guess you can help build the road. I probably don't even want to wait to heal. I'm just once I get my troops set up up there, I'm gonna have to go right to it. That should give me a, an efficient road for that entire length. Can I watermill this? No, I can workshop this. Otherwise we're just going to chop more. No reason to do anything other than that. Now this is interesting. I don't have a way to reliably pop borders in my new conquests. This would do it though. Yeah, I'll get a little bit less experience, but I think the two promos is more important. So we'll go free religion and uh, just go no infrastructure at all. And I do have... Actually, don't have enough units to feel confident without healing yet. It's unfortunate. Workshop. 
<laughs> yeah, instant barracks. So it's a fast contributing city right there. Take it comes out of revolt, starts building units. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. I think everyone else is largely going to have a good enough road network. How are they doing technologically? A couple people have scientific method on me. A couple people don't have anything on me. Jeez. Yeah, I misplayed this. The way to win this map is the chop right away. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Chop. Because a chop is worth um, 45 hammers on epic speed. A granite is 120. So yeah, workers. But you can capture workers. So yeah, you just capture workers. That's what you do. Who else is actually hurt here? I don't see who's hurt. It's not my catapults. It's not my rifles. This I do not see. Whatever. Can't be hurt that much if I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so, well, I'll just deal with it. And windmill. Windmills are awesome. Yeah, these cities are actually completely improved, so now I have spare work returns to chop and improve, uh, well I could improve a tundra tile, but it's not going to help me. So... Yeah, I just needed to attack right away. This is silly. Even against the redcoats, I bet it would have been better. Go ahead and road that. Might as well act like the city's already mine. Kind of is. And... Grenadier spam. No, you're gonna be my designated catapult city. I've decided this randomly. You are now my designated catapult city. You can spam... Cavalry. There. And you can be, after building a grenadier, designated rifle land. Troll, oh, lol. And again, let's just uh, actually get four accuracy catapults without castles. Boom, no defenses. Now, here, combat two, pinch. Isn't this Churchill? Yeah, these are uh, protective red coats, and I'm still getting the odds. So yeah, the way to win this map is derp, chop, grenadiers. That's what you do. That's the way to win. And I'll actually just take a break there. Get these guys consolidated. Interesting. Do I still have an explorer alive and nearby? Yes, I do. You're going to be my medic. Because <laughs> I don't need more promotions. I'm not going to reliably get a lot of level 3 or level 4 promotions from 10 experience. So there's no point to that. Meaning that I should go straight for... Um, the super medic is it'll help more. Oh, well, a greenery I'm gonna need. But yeah, easily my best attacking unit is the grenadier. There's no doubt on that. Let's take London next. Hill cities will give me a little bit of grief. But it shouldn't be too bad. Can't really chop here. Go ahead and fortify you. And okay, now things are going to get a little bit slow. Chop. 
Windmill. <laughs> Windmills are so perfect. Go ahead and chop. Chop. Chop everything. Yeah, what the heck? I'll workshop that. Oh, 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 no, no, not chop that. I actually bothered to build a lumber mill. I should probably keep it. And what have we here? Same deal. A couple red coats. No biggie. Yeah. I think Montezuma is the best here. Just go vassalage right away, build some grenadiers, kill people, build some grenadiers, kill people, build some grenadiers, kill people. For the sake of the let's play, I'll finish this, and I'll show it, because I think it's useful to show it. But a winning time is going to do that. Just chop the grenadiers right away. They're really good offensively, it'll take the AI a while to hook up its horse and get situated, it'll do stupid things like research, and you can just uh, slaughter it. Okay then. I think I'll skip turn there. Do I still have a medic in my current offensive stack? I do. Might even be able to stack split if you're lucky. Hey, I was not attacked. Probably should have been attacked. It's better than sitting back and letting me stomp on him. Okay, same deal. Oh, City Girls and two Redcoats can finally overcome. Look at that, I'm at 10% odds. Because he gets 25% uh, good for gunpowder, fortify, um, the city itself, and then... Oh, it's because it's I'm attacking across a river. It's not like I have to do that. Um, here. <laughs> at this point, the units themselves are more valuable than... For speed finish, they're more valuable to retain. And roads. This isn't the best city in the world, is it? Lead troops is a warlord. And yeah, now I'm going to start to lose money, and I, I have enough money. <laughs> it's not going to matter. I think I'm just going to stuff this guy back in the city for the moment. He can contribute later. I think it might also be time to start routing reinforcements. No, th these Russians don't have horse. I don't need to worry about them. I should focus. So next up would be... Center Green Russia is kind of crappy. We're going to go for the other Redcoat Civ. And then peel down on these guys. Should be enough. Alright. Yeah, I should be winning by now. Not, uh, not here. <laughs> Once again, just chop everything. <laughs> just like ancient era starts, huh? That's how it is. <laughs> it still takes forever. Okay, now let's see if I can get a better look. Pinch, combat two. Eh, improved my odds by f like 15%. Solid. And two of them. Hey, two of them's gonna be enough. The rest I'll get to keep. I think you guys can just chill out there. Skip turn. Yeah, now Grenadiers don't get the bonuses on the defense, but the AI rarely takes advantage of that except with mounted units. So don't worry about that. Flanking is probably not a big deal since you're not attacking with your uh, military. Or with your uh, collateral. Yeah, you're not attacking with your military. That's uh, it's great. You can be another designated rifle city. I have a feeling I'm going to need them soon. Here up and finish. That should allow me some range. Unfortunately, this is a hill city, and that's also going to hurt me. Well, let's just hope I have enough to deal with it. These guys can stay in pad for another turn. They're positioned to take advantage. 
And uh, I think I said my plan was to go north still, so we're going to start routing units to London. Go ahead and windmill. And yeah, the faster worker turns are definitely worth it here too. So rare to have serfdom be useful. Maybe it was just intended as a late game start of Civic. Maybe that's what it is. Because Civ isn't always about the ancient start, although it's usually about the ancient start. That's why most people play, is to uh, build an empire over time. But in this case, serfdom, I guess, strictly speaking, it does have a place in the game. You just have to not play uh, standard settings at all. As we start from ancient, you need more workers before serfdom can help you. But if you start from later, like medieval or on, where you have access to serfdom right from the start, that changes your worker equation and also changes the value of the improvements you can make, like so. So that's why you're seeing me use them, because they're just such a better deal in this format than they are in the other. And okay. Starting to get some cavalry in my stacks. Also notice that I'm not seeing any enemy stacks. Um, there really isn't enough time for that guy to build a stack. It, look at all these forests it's keeping. By doing that, there's just no way. Hey, cavalry. Well, simply put, attacking a red coat, 2% odds, 2.5% odds. Attacking with a well-promoted grenadier, 26% odds. Not much of a uh, plan here, and I'm winning at some really improbable odds. Now, interestingly, those redcoats were picked as defenders over the cavalry. Why is that? Well, because actually I get better odds attacking the cavalry. Cute. But for this, since I have a rifle on hand, I might as well use it and lose it. Great. Um, uh, oh, it didn't even damage. Wow, I had like a 70% chance of winning that battle. I didn't even get a hit. Well, suck formation rifle! Haha. <laughs> Yeah, you like that. I think I'll just leave everything else behind and go with these. And, uh, same deal here, just... Barracks and Grenadier. Okay, these guys can heal. Do you have the camp? And yeah, I'm actually pushing a happy cap by tanking cities because I'm getting more resources. And that's a more significant impact right now. I think I'll actually bother spreading irrigation to get some of that rice tile. I'm not in cast. Why am I getting four hammers? Uh, oh, because it's plains workshops, right. I could make my workshops better by getting out of serfdom. But I think the uh, faster uh, units are better, uh, faster building of improvements because uh, that also includes chops for additional hammers and windmills, water mills, things that are not benefited by a cast system. Um, you're not going to be able to attack effectively. Huh, Grenadier and Cavalry. Okay, whatever game. Starting to lose some money now. Let's we'll see how that goes. Could money actually be a legitimate <laughs> concern in this? I don't think so, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's get a road there. Yeah, kind of running out of things to do in these other cities. You guys can just return. Hey, hey combat three. Actually, I could consider taking formation too on guys like that. What that would do is allow me decent odds attacking anything. Although I think specialist units are probably better. And then just attack with some combat dudes into cities. The best defender code is going to screw me if I try to make uber units like that. It's going to be barely worth it. Interestingly, the grenadier is drawn as the defender. Oh, because he's pinch. Okay, whatever. Now the cavalry, which easily beats me. Well, not easily. I had like 30% odds there. The redcoats are just dead. They can't handle grenadiers either. I find that interesting. I never realized. 
This lowers my opinion of the Redcoat even further. In the start where they're supposed to be at their strongest, I'm blowing them out with stock units. And these are protective Redcoats that are getting their uh, pants pulled down too. It's not like I'm just uh, stomping on Elizabeth or Vicky, although I will be soon. I don't know which of them I'll be fighting next, but one of them, certainly. Okay, and he's dead, so that's two down, but I would have needed to win already to uh, have a competitive finish here. But this is interesting. You just do this and you win, so yeah. I'll route everything there. I am free religion. When is this going to get a border pop? Three turns. Yeah, it feels like an eternity. And yeah, I probably won't replay this right away. I'll continue on to other games as I've been doing up until this point. And my reasoning for that is uh, just by finishing the game at all, you tend to have a competitive finish. So, I mean, finishing all ten, it'll, it'll place well overall just on game spam. And then I'll work on uh, raising my rank in individual things, if I care. I mean, I might just say screw it and continue on with other things. That's a possibility as well. So yeah, let's use the city to heal, chop that out. I guess I can just road there. One of the Russians is plotting war. Who is this? Kathy, of all people, is plotting war. <laughs> She's only cautious towards me. Despite sharing really oh no, I went free religion. We were sharing religion. This city will get a pop quickly because it's got a... Wow, wait, what? No wonder this is taking so long. I don't know, it's 15 turns, right? Epic, right. Okay. Thought that seemed a little bit off. It's because I'm playing on a slower game speed. Derp. Okay. I could spread irrigation around, but that would take forever, so we're not going to do it that way. We're just going to clear some jungle. And since these cities are out of revolt, I guess it's time. Start making water mills and whatnot up there. Why are you why is this cottaged? No. Wrong answer, dude. <laughs> Chop. And yeah, I'm remembering to queue up units now. Thank you. Let's see how people have tacked. Yeah, considering you can win by now, there's clearly uh, alternate Nick did, as you saw when I started this uh, video series. There's really no point in teching in this at all. <laughs> because if I could have won by now, the most, the worst that anyone have is steam power. Although I guess um, legitimate threat is. Infantry. I would struggle really badly against them. They get a bonus against gunpowder, so... That could be problematic, true. But they wouldn't have them yet. Because even the person who beelined it, considering they don't have steam power, here I'll show that off again, when I mean, they don't have scientific method, so he's bas uh, she's basically beelining AL, and she doesn't have it yet, and you could have won by now. So, or I could have won by now, or anyone who's playing this could have won by now. So... Uh, yeah, there's no point. And I think I should just launch from this tile rather than over because I can move into range anyway. No, well, yeah. It would be better to hit into this square so I can get to York more quickly. It doesn't look like that's happening. Shoot, I'm not going to be able to spread irrigation there like any time this year, am I? Oh, whatever. I'll farm this tile and spread it this direction. That's how I'll do it. So then I can go irrigation, irrigation, and workshop the rest. Nice. Okay. Go ahead and chop. Very well. 
Now I could just go straight irrigation across too. But for the time being, let's go over here and start with the water mills. Water mills are so good. Yeah, whatever. There's no point in being at war an extra turn. We'll just push right on over. And I, I don't want to micro my workers, but I have to. You're seeing the disadvantages of AI worker micro in the AI's efficiency of their start or lack thereof. And they're doing terribly. And is this five turns? <laughs> Yeah, I can water mill here. And that'll force it the way I want. Sometimes it'll build water mills at random on one side of the river of the other or the other or like on a bend. It's say you want one here, but it puts one here and now you can't water mill this tile. Well, that sucks. Or in this case it would be the other way around. You want if you build a water mill here, you want it to use this river, not this river. That way you can put a water mill there. The game doesn't always want to cooperate with that. So you have to be careful with the order that you construct them. Onward and upward. Mostly onward. Because we're kind of playing on a flat game surface. I mean, I guess I could have tried chain capitulation as a means to win, but I think we just need the land. The land's not that hard to take, as evidenced. And I think, again, I'm just going to move over like that. I think that's better. Wow. Workers are improving things so fast. I overbuilt them. I overbuilt workers. Amazing. I shouldn't have built any workers. That's why I overbuilt them. I could just capture AI workers and develop my cities that way. Or maybe build like one. So I could have one in each city with serfdom. Yeah, like build one in the capital, chop it out, move the worker over, done. <laughs> you could just use those guys. Everything else is uh, grenadiers, grenadiers, grenadiers forever. With the heart. Heart grenadiers. I mean, look at this. If I had this sooner, it would just be strong. It's another 20 hammers. What's going to beat that? I can't beat that with like tile improvements in one city. And I thought it would be more hammer costly to take cities, like I said at the start of the video. And like, yeah, I don't have a reliable way to take cities cheaply. <clears throat> Wrong. Apparently you do. <laughs> it's Grenadiers. Like, I heard they were the best unit, but I didn't think they were uh, for attacking in this era with these settings. What I did not realize is that they are not just the best unit and crappy, but they are actually a dominating unit in this era of parody warfare and really underused in general gameplay. Anyhow, with the aggressive bonuses of Montezuma and spiritual for civic swapping, I think this will be the fastest civ um, if somebody replays it who has the micro attentiveness to actually make that come to fruition. I like how I do that. Um, I was playing a game, fastest one city, uh, G Major 95, where the challenge is fastest conquest. Um, with one city challenge and uh, of course I don't do very well in the game like I win 780 it's on monarch so one city challenge monarch I'm just gonna put a random city errors and two guy here so not too bad and leave the uh, medic behind can I reach this yes let's take Coventry next so yeah, and uh, people are saying that they're going to use Persia. Some people said you needed to tech. You don't need the tech. You can just kill everybody with your chariot unique unit. And uh, apparently a lot of the Hall of Famers don't know that uh, war chariots are strictly superior to um, immortals. Even against archers, they are. Is What happens is uh, as defensive bonuses grow, the raw combat bonus from the ten percent uh, from the five strength uh, char war chariots plus their first strike immunity starts to matter more than the uh, archery bonus that the immortals get. And since you're pretty much only on the offensive in that format, the defensive bonuses of the immortals aren't really relevant. 
And actually, I should be starting... There's really no good place to start. Just finish that. And, uh, yeah. Take a secondary force up to Brighton. You heal up. You do nothing. And, okay, we got the bombardment down. Oh, that's right, I already attacked and lost, stupid unit cycling. But I did damage the cavalry to the point where it can't uh, really be effective. Still getting around 75% odds against redcoats. Would be a little bit better against rifles. <laughs> but this is uh, pretty dominating. Pretty dominating. So do you get? Ugh, I hate losing the forge. The forge is useful because I get the engineer right away for mercantilism. And, uh... <laughs> it's tempting to take that with a catapult, but my, you know, it's pretty much the reason I have cavalry with me. Is that I can quickly take these kinds of things. Um, actually these catapults can now, uh, join up. Do I need them though? Probably not. I can probably just attack. <laughs> just keep moving. These guys won't heal these guys you just attacked, so there's no point. Alright. I was expecting this to be a harder game too, to be honest. This isn't a hard format at all. It's just the only challenge is outdoing other players. It's so easy just to win. <laughs> you don't do anything. You just build military and kill. I guess I'm losing a lot of gold per turn. That's a concern, I guess. But at the same time, I'm kind of out conquering that loss rate. I think I would have domination locked up before I run into trouble there. And again, I could just build sack altars everywhere. I could even flip into that civic and uh, instantly recover. All right, I could even flip into slavery, whip them all out, f uh, flip back into serfdom and continue. That's ridiculous. But I like it. Oh, water, water mills. Oh no, I can't build a water mill here. Oh, workshop. And actually, does this city have any food at all? No, no it doesn't. Okay, we can stand to use a farm where we can't otherwise build a water mill. That's fine. Water mills are great, but some food to uh, get a little kickstart on working them all. Very useful. And yeah, um, windmills with replaceable parts are strictly better than uh, mines until railroad. Uh, that's why I'm building windmills. Some of you guys might want to know that. And that uh, was my reasoning. Um, you get two food and two hammers instead of one food and three hammers. And that allows you to work uh, workshops, which uh, are better food, are better hammers than anything else you can work, or other alternative hammer tiles. Or just to grow onto more windmills more quickly. The food wins there so easily, the food wins that. And uh, let's see here. We'll move these guys to consolidate. And once we're done healing, we're set. Yeah, because now I actually start healing from the Medic 3 bonus on the adjacent tile. Nice. Okay, Cavalry. That won't hold up very well against this. And yeah, if I need the Catapults, if I actually come upon a decent sized stack, I could always uh, switch it up and just attack with them for collateral. But for these battles where I have fairly good odds right away, and uh, not a lot of enemies defending. Collateral just doesn't make sense. And we're seeing that quite clearly. I'll leave the formation guy in here. Granary, barracks. <laughs> Losing so much money. I think I'll probably win though. Well, maybe not. I got a ways to go yet, don't I? Well, we'll, see. we'll cross bridges when we get to them. It's not important right now. 
Go ahead and build that. Ooh, another great general. But why, I don't have any use for another great general. Golden Age. Yeah, as if. Um, one thing I could do... Shoot, I'm unhappy. Anyway, one thing I could do, possibly, is a uh, military academy. Where's my best production city right now? Surprisingly, it's one of my original cities. Actually, it's not surprising at all. They're pretty much all the same style. <laughs> <laughs> this is a riverside city with lots and lots of hammers in it. Oh, look at this. Pop 11, 32 raw hammers. Before assembly line, before cast guild chemistry workshops, before any of that. It's not even fully grown. It's hard to beat that. It is. Actually, do I need them? I guess I should bring them along. Ah. Let's not make the same mistake twice, shall we? Let's take the uh, temporary boost. Fast returns or better returns. Kind of what's true in Civ. So frequently. And you... We'll leave the cavalry and one grenadier behind to protect against the opposing cavalry. Although it's looking like that's not even necessary. Ah, uh, shoot. Of course these guys have Cossacks. What do I care, though, if they continually def just use their <laughs> mounted units to defend cities like this? <laughs> A Cossack's gonna be a normal cavalry against my uh, non-cavalry attacking force. This is stupid. And they threw themselves into defensive bonuses. Yeah, any advantage cavalry has against grenadiers goes out the window when they attack a grenadier in the woods. No one's going to hear that tree fall. Yeah, more water mills. They didn't even snipe my worker. How come when I automate workers, they snipe workers, but when I deliberately move work, uh, workers into enemy borders, nothing bad happens. I get away with it. <laughs> Guess I shouldn't complain. Derp. <laughs> Is that a masterful baiting of my worker? It doesn't seem to, of my units, it doesn't seem to be. Shut up. I'm going to declare on you soon. Look at your panties in a bunch. Oh, hey. Easy workers. Yeah, I really, really, really don't need to build workers in this game if I ever play it. <laughs> and I do apologize. I had a general idea, but I have never played one of these myself before, so you're seeing some uh, growing pains. <laughs> well, because of it. Nope, yep, instantly blowing away the defenses. And five grenadiers should be able to beat two redcoats and a catapult. 87% odds, thanks to combat three. Definitely a good draw. I'll go ahead and watermill that. Spread irrigation. Okay, I think... Wow, it almost doesn't matter where I route. I think I have enough on my northern flank. I think I'm going to want to start massing units down here to take out the next Russian Empire. Because between these guys and what I'm using to take out the English right now, I have enough in the north. And I think the um, spiritual bonus of setting up your empire faster is better than the drill one that you'll be using offensively on the Grenadiers in retrospect. And alright. Another one is down. I think my primary launching point will be this city with some backup coming from the London region. Yeah, sure, we'll throw another rifle city in. It's all good. Yeah, so... Or, yeah, London. Is it going to attack here? 
with uh, leftover troops and then attack over here with my main forces. Might retaliate and get Dover. If that happens, oh well. Dover doesn't even have a granary right now. And all I really care about are granaries and forges. So, well, I had a barracks. And I'd lose the barracks, but I also don't have a barracks currently, so that doesn't matter either. <sighs> I don't like it. I don't like that she's closing in on assembly line. I don't think anyone in the right mind would like it. <laughs> it just has unfortunate implications. And yeah, I like free religion here. That's also turning out to be very good. Is otherwise I'd have to be in cast system and running an artist to get my border pops, or maybe I'd have to uh, build. Um, I guess I could just build culture to get my border pops, but that's uh, using hammers that could go elsewhere, and I only need the five experience. So yeah, that's uh, that's fine. And I'm just gonna farm here too. There's no point. Yeah, I can't build anything else on that tile that I could use very well. Yeah, so this is a uh, staging point two. And it looks like I'm just committing to using leftover troops up here. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> I can basically do that. <laughs> Chop. I'm already starting to mask grenadiers here. Yeah, that's so fast. These renaissance starts are hilarious. And yeah, look at this. This is plenty. Let's go ahead and snuggle up on their borders with this. <sighs> Meanwhile, my other units are going to have to move into position here and heal. I probably don't need multiple defenders on my back lines. The AI is not very good about attacking back lines or even scouting them. Well, it can see everything, but it's not very good about attacking hack lines. <laughs> we'll go with that. And I guess I can send some help over here. Because this, this is going to have to be the lion's share of my offensive, I think. Go ahead and fortify up for the moment. Chop. More chop. Ultra chop. Godlike. Um. Okay, stop emphasizing hammers. We'll just grow. <laughs> Watermills are nice in the golden age. I feel like financial aggressive. Um, actually, I think four farms here is good enough. It's just a windmill. If I could get environmentalism too. <laughs> Man, with a start like this and playing this way, these windmills would be absolutely ridiculous with uh, environmentalism. Hey, look at this. Even Cossacks. I, I was worried about cavalry with Grenadiers. Um, and normally they, I, that would be a legitimate concern. Cavalry own Grenadiers. But look at this. We are quite a few turns into the game. And the AI hasn't chopped its uh, forests yet, so I can just use them for defensive bonus cover. Even that's not a big deal. So this, you can just grenadier this game. That's all you do, grenadier. And the grenadiers are the, your truth. Nothing outdoes them. <laughs> Except for stuff that takes too long to reach. Cannons would be good, infantry would be good, but the problem is by the time you'd get there, you could have just won the game, so... No point at all. Well, whatever. Leave one dude behind. And yeah, this way I can just sit on the forest the entire attack duration. I like it. How am I doing in soldiers? Okay, that's why no one's declared on me. I've tripled the power of anybody else. You do need roughly double to deny Ward X, but if you've tripled, they're not going to declare on you. So, 
Unless they started plotting before. But that's just stupidity on the game's part. Because why would they ever declare on you if you triple their power? Like, they should realize that this is not something they should be doing. And I guess I can reinforce from Tanoxel and through Russia if I need. Oh man, I didn't even have this force put in yet. Well, I'll let them heal up. They can be my uh, follow-up force. That's fine. Taking forever to get the required land percentage. Looking at it, I already have dominating pop in, well, probably after this upcoming war. But land area, not so much. It might actually behoove me to start spamming out some settlers in one of these backwater cities. You know what, Newcastle. You, after this Grenadier, <laughs> settler is almost five times the cost of a Grenadier, but it's okay. The city's almost done growing, so... Um, which Russia is this? Their colors here are different from their colors here. You know, I'd have to assume that red equals red, but if that's true, like... Why does white equal green? <laughs> oh, I can. I guess I could use dispositions to tell. Yeah, okay. Kathy's next. There we go. Kind of a stopgap method. I guess I could also use religions to tell, or. There's a couple ways, but none of them seem 100% reliable. I don't like it. Oh, right. I got expelled. Not from school, though. I was actually a good student in school. I tended to do pretty well. Man, I remember back in high school, I would, like, fall asleep in class, and then the professor would call on me to answer, like, a math question in calculus, for example. And, uh, I would kind of, like, wake up, <laughs> walk up to the board, do the problem, get it correct, and then just go back to sleep after doing it. <laughs> but my school had a lot of people who like didn't even try in class, and I actually paid attention and made sure I knew the like what was going on before I went to sleep, and I made sure I had my homework done too. So the professors tended to leave me alone, as long as I, you know I wasn't causing disruptions. A sleeping student's much better than one that's raising a riot, especially a sleeping student who's doing well. You know, it's kind of like uh, allowing them to spend their teaching resources elsewhere rather than on me. So in retrospect, it kind of makes sense that they just left that alone. I would probably let it slide as a teacher, too. If a student's, you know, high A student and not really in danger of performing poorly, you probably just leave them alone. I don't know. I played football, too. Maybe they're helping out the football team. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's not like college where... You can just not do anything and get away with it. Not unless you're like one of those super football prospects, which I wasn't. <laughs> and I know how to play the game. I have reasonable strength, reasonable speed, whatever. Um, I was really good with endurance. It's hard to get me tired. But that doesn't make a good player by itself. I just didn't have the raw talent that you see in like major collegiate athletics, for example. And eh, whatever. Yeah, you gotta use what you got, I guess. Alright, we actually have a decent amount of resistance. So, do I have any unpromoted catapults? I do. I'm gonna probably want to hit with a couple barrage catapults. And here I'm happy to have taken the accuracy promotion on the first couple, which will allow me to chew through the defenses in record time. Again, you'd probably want cannons for this normally, because they'd all have castles, but the AI didn't build castles because they're obsolete. Ha! Huh. Are they actually? I think they are. I think walls are obsolete, and therefore you can't build castles. Yeah, so it's impossible to build castles, and suddenly catapults are really good in Renaissance starts. Troll lol. -lo. Okay. So, one round of barrage to... Wow, 13.6 strength. There's one full strength Cossack. I think I'm just going to want to do this again. 
Although... Okay. So I'm gonna have to like, watch the best defender code here. Or I can just get lucky. That works too. What if I take formation on my grenadier? Decent odds, surprisingly. And those guys are defending before the full strength one. Wow, I even get winning odds with uh, a full strength guy with combat one. These promotions matter. I thought that should come as a surprise to anyone, I guess. Yeah, I got smooth sailing now. <laughs> Screw using cavalry. Really? I just lost to a rifle. It really doesn't take much damage to punch through. This is probably her quote-unquote stack, too. And I am losing lots of 80% odds battles here. Give me a break, game. I didn't even damage it. What the hell, man? Okay, now we are back in business. I should have taken much fewer losses there than I did. I just got unlucky. So Grenadiers continue to impress. Is it the Hill City too, by the way? I'm sure that didn't escape anyone paying attention, but you know, I don't always pay attention in Let's Plays. Sometimes I'm not even watching the screen when I'm watching the Let's Play, so I would not begrudge others doing that. And I know at least some of you do because you've told me in your comments. And hey, if you just want to listen to it and mouse over sometimes, hey, whatever makes you enjoy it. I mean, people even do that with major TV shows. Which I am not. <laughs> if I had more time, I, and I was doing this like full time or something, I'd be able to bring a lot higher quality in a lot of ways, actually. Um, I would edit my videos better. I would um, have a proper intro and outro. Well, not, probably not an outro. Maybe an outro. Yeah, I'll watch the editing, watch the language, watch the implications. <laughs> and uh, put more time into giving background information in non-Civ games. In Civ games, I kind of know my stuff uh, in terms of the game mechanics, so I can bring those along to the table. But in non-Civ games, uh, like Heroes of Might and Magic 3, I was kind of let's playing it as a rookie. Well, maybe I would have done more research before I started the let's play if I were doing it like professionally or something, but I don't know. There's something to be said for doing it just for the enjoyment as well. But man, I do like the Let's Play. It's a lot, It's been a lot of fun for me throughout my entire time doing it. There's a reason I have, like, I'm um, closing in on, like, what, 900 videos and still going. It's not for everyone. I've seen some people uh, kind of flounder there and stop making videos. And uh, that's probably the saddest thing when you really enjoy somebody and they stop doing videos for a long time. But... I didn't like it, so I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, wow, it, what, what was this city place? I guess just for the horse resource? <laughs> that rhymes. No, but seriously, I guess you could farm a few tiles and make it workable. I mean, in this era, you can make anything workable. And you know what? I have a lot of units and not a lot of money. So I think it's time to do this. Ooh, ooh, excuse me. Yes, mass sacrificial altar now. Because I'm not going to run out of units easily. And the only person who was threatening infantry is currently being pummeled, so... Someone else might get cannon. No, someone else has cannon. No, no one else has cannon. Never mind. Nobody's cannon. Good. <laughs> I was worried a moment. That's not the case. No one has cannons. Where are you going? Oh, probably to my capital. This stack does not have a medic. Um, we'll put it on a cavalry. I'm really not using my cavalry for anything at the moment, so whatever. And I think I'll just skip turn here. Wait for my catapults to bombard. Such a huge force. Here, um... Maybe it's large enough that I should just attack right now. Yeah, I have enough catapults. I have enough everything. Let's go. A little two-prong war. Losing respect for the AI at this point. Plus, this is taking forever. 
Um, much longer than I was expecting it from a Let's Play standpoint and turn standpoint. Although, to be fair, I just used a suboptimal strategy when it comes to the turn standpoint. This could have gone a lot more quickly. And oh yeah, I had uh, these guys still. Oh, let's use them. No, I don't think I need the uh, great medic. I said... Thank you. Well, I do need the great medic, but not there. I'd rather have him here to heal up the remainder of the stack in that city. And now I have enough uh, military presence so that they're not going to be able to run by me and take the city. Which can be annoying, especially if they were to raise it. The AI doesn't do intelligent things like that. Yeah, losing 180 gold per turn at 0%. A little bit rough. A little bit rough. Man, I should just go for, like, space wins with this. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> just kill everyone and fill it, go to space. No, it wouldn't work. You'd never get a decent finish time with that. <laughs> Ever. And I could win space by now, and I'm not even that good at microing space. <laughs> Did recently, actually. I saw a couple weak space times on the Hall of Fame and decided I wanted to destroy somebody's dream and take their spot. So I did. Catherine has a grenadier here. I get a bonus against rifles. I do have like a random cavalry sitting around, so that's not going to save them to have a grenadier there. And two turns to heal. That's worth it. Yeah, when you have a city like that and a super medic, it's really nice. And again, remember the rule, viewers. No anything but explorers or scouts as super medic. That's the rule. If you do anything else, you're just losing it. It's not worth it. Ever. Just don't do it. Alright, Russia. You're gonna get some Crusha. Whoa, 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 whoa. And what are you doing, designated settler city? You suck. <laughs> no, I knew it would be like this. And oh my god, I'm losing so much money. <laughs> no, I have been blocked. Uncool. Whatever, we can send a helper. A companion grenadier. Wait, what? Was that a, uh... No, oh, it's just... Oh, I was thinking it's my exploring medic from, like, the start of the game. I don't really need him now. Let's uh, get rid of this. So he's just going to get killed at random eventually. And he is costing some maintenance. Not a lot, but... You never know. You never know what will make the difference. <laughs> and also, I could avoid strike by building wealth, too. In addition to the sack altars. And the sack altars are cheaper. Which, uh, if money's a problem in this format, again, that's just making this the case for the Aztecs over the Japanese even stronger. Let's we'll skip a turn here. Hmm. Well, I guess that city's first. And then Yaktusk. So easy. I have too many workers, too. How many workers do I have? You see, the thing is, as you capture more cities, your older ones are developed. So you're using your old workers to develop the new cities and your new workers as well. So eventually, you can get too many. It's possible. And I think I've hit that point, honestly. I think I've long since hit the uh, too many workers threshold. Chops. Workshops. Who builds cottages in this format? Are people actually running emancipation? I should have figured. They would be so stupid. It's not like they'd do anything intelligent. I'm like, oh my god, someone's plotting war. No. 
No, that's actually not what's happening here. <laughs> I saw the fist icons there momentarily. No! Oh, wait. Yeah! <laughs> uh, awesome. You can take City Raider 2 to get to Barrage. Um, to get to uh, Accuracy, excuse me. But I like the uh, route better because these guys are not going to get good odds ever, so I might as well just increase the collateral damage inflicted. Well, screw you. Why would you take Pinch, jerk? Oh well. I'll just uh, drop a City Garrison guy in here. Okay, fine. I'm not even going to micromanage cities anymore. All the new ones. Other than to say, Sack Alter ASAP. <laughs> that much micromanagement I will do. And the rest of you just kind of block any uh, random attacks on the Grenadier. Thank you. I think, again, uh, these cavalry aren't really serving much purpose beyond just getting in the way of grenadiers effectively attacking my stack. Although, the, my grenadiers themselves are probably good enough for that, in hindsight. Are these promoted? Yes. Is that enough to blow away the defensive with minimal investment? Yes. Excellent. Alright then. The grenadier and cavalry will defend slightly. Everything else is just going to get wrecked. Oh no, even that's not defending so well. Oh wow! It's a little bit lucky. <laughs> um, there we go. I think... Yeah, I think I'd better throw these guys in here for a round just to pay less maintenance because it is starting to get kind of bad. Although we are getting close. I could just... Uh, Take peace and suicide spam settlers FTW too. That's also a possibility. Okay. Oh. Whatever. Just stuff everything in here. These guys should be good to go next turn. Yeah, same deal here. Accuracy is such a nice promotion to have when there's no walls and castles to interfere with it. And this guy survived a lot of fights. Combat 4 plus pinch? Oh, then he dies. Haha, <laughs> troll lol. <ball, ball. laughs> I still think you, if you're not talking about usage of a great general, you should just attack with your highest odds thing first. It gives you the best chance to do damage and uh, the most chance of actually capturing the city successfully. In my opinion, worth it. 8% defense is remaining, but all he has defending this is rifles and catapult. So, again, just more of the same. Mm, you got lucky. But that's uh, just one fight. I will capture cities faster than I lose gold. Go, go, go. <laughs> it was actually a very wise choice to keep my slider down from the start of the game, because I would have problems with strike now. And now I see why not everyone is matching tournament next time. You have to have some econ management to stand a chance in this one. It's good to note. Not a lot. It's not hard, but... but yeah. I actually it won't be the last place finish. Although I'll be close. Well, it depends. It depends who plays. A lot of times you're talking last place, but only good players are pulling the map, so you're beat out by a couple players who are pretty good, and then that's that. You beat everyone else. <laughs> Technically, you beat everyone who didn't play. <laughs> that's always the case as well. So there's that. Oh yeah, I need to remember to actually take the city. Frickin' unit cycling. Ah, damaged, huh? Oh well, I'm pretty safe here. I 
Man, I really might be able to conquer out my gold supply. No, I won't be. The only uh, hope I have here is to do it quickly. Because I can strike away all my units, and uh, the last English Empire likes me for some reason. Wisely chosen your civics. She must like representation. Yeah, but then I could, like, after I lose all my units to strike, I can uh, go maybe free market. No, mercantilism is probably better at this point. But I could go, like, nationhood to get the cost reduction on the civic upkeep. Um, I can build wealth. I can build banks. Because I have a lot of tile improvements. Most of my core empire is well developed. And the advantage to that is that you're, um, you're pretty good to, uh, even if you lose all your workers, you're pretty good. You'll eventually get out of it. And since I have stuff for Rostov, I'm gonna go to, uh, to Ver. T Ver. Tivo. Copy paste. Oh, now I got another combat for Pinch Guy. Some of these grenadiers are just lasting, surprisingly. Do I have a medic? I do, it's my cavalry. Okay. I do have to be a little bit careful about counterattacks. Again, I seem to have lots and lots of defensive terrain bonuses here, though. Oh no, we'll just do this. At least two rifles behind, like, the AI. <laughs> the AI seems to think it's a good idea, so we'll do it, too. It must be a good idea if the AI likes it, right? Silence. Well, yeah, that's pretty much how I'd answer that question, too. If I could avoid laughing at it. Oh, here we are. Last city for this guy. And we are still using grenadiers. Grenadiers are the answer in this game. There's no doubt there. Yeah, we'll take some workers. Since the AI decided to throw some to me. Wow, a chop and it takes one of 13 turns off of my <laughs> settler. Settlers are not the way to go here. <laughs> More sacrificial altar. I don't think many of my cities have built them yet, or maybe some have. Yeah, some have. Okay then. Second emergency provision. Banks. It's not like I don't have enough units. <laughs> In fact, I should probably halt all unit production. Because there's nothing. I, I don't need anything. I have plenty of military. I could probably avoid strike through uh, building our wealth after getting banks everywhere. As bad as it looks right now with negative 200 gold per turn. Well, you saw it in the Monarch Conquest, uh, no, Monarch Domination game with horse archers. And it's the same idea. And then meanwhile, I'm just going to try to buy as much time to make tile improvements as possible. I have a lot of workers, so... Wow, do I have a lot of workers. <laughs> this is hilarious. I can pretty much go uh, non-stop because the last AI will never declare on me. And killing everybody but one is probably going to be good enough. I just need to get the land expansions. If I had the money, I'd run Culture Slider. But I don't. <laughs> I don't have the money. <laughs> I'm also going to cancel my unit waypointing, because at this point, it's it's going to let me find out if I'm still building units when I shouldn't be building units. <laughs> well, this has actually been an interesting game for me. It's definitely novel. And, uh, yeah, five cities left. He doesn't like how the war is going. Maybe because I have, uh, still over triple his power. Even if he is second. 
And yeah, in these later air starts, strategic resources don't matter as much as you're seeing. Nothing I'm using except for the cavalry require resources, and it's become clear I didn't need the cavalry. So, oh well. The heck, man, no. <laughs> What's all my money going into? Unit cost. City maintenance. Civic upkeep. Ick. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Race against time. Maybe I couldn't get a much better time than this. In retrospect. Chop it all. Yeah, I'll be healed in one turn. I think that's worth the wait. Again, they just don't have a lot. And I'm pushing into core cities here. We're going to go with uh, scientific method here. Wow, I blew out the defenses in one round. 60% with four catapults. That's accuracy for you. And accuracy catapults are actually better than accuracy trebs on a four cost basis. If you're just going for bombardment, the catapults win. Also, catapults are better for strictly collateral. Trebs are really only good in medieval warfare for survivability. Trebs are not good in this. Uh, I might get a question along those lines eventually. And I don't need this guy, and we're going to get rid of him. Yeah, I think I'm going to strike. Just maybe. <laughs> the question is, will it matter? And the answer is no, because settlers do not disband. So I can just drop city, 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 sit there and strike with only one military unit left surviving in each of my cities, and uh, that would win the game. Last AI won't declare on me. I should be able to kill this guy before I run out of money and strike. So, yeah, that's... Good enough. <sighs> but uh, Vassalage is probably going to be my best bet until I uh, lose these units, in which case the nation... Because Vassalage gives you unit supply. And after that, nationhood wins. You know, I'll just settle them for some minor beaker returns. It doesn't matter now. This game's over. <laughs> and yeah, sacrificial altar again. I could go out of serfdom. Is serfdom low upkeep? Yeah get out of mercantilism, but plus representation is probably my best science income. Yeah, I think I'm screwed here. <laughs> I think I bit off more than I can chew. No, no, that isn't true. I'm going to win the game, so it doesn't matter. I need to keep telling myself this, because I seem to be losing that perspective sense. Okay. And just keep chopping. Oop, 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 oop. Nope, nope. Don't need more grenadiers. Just gonna go sack, altar, and banks. Banks are easily the best hammer return for money, if, you, uh, if you're curious. The other two are uh, more for their health and happiness, respectively. Um, grocers and markets. Get to environmentalism. That's my economy savers, environmentalism. <laughs> awesome. Sort of is. Well, okay, this city's done, so... I'll just drag more forces down here. Don't need 
the catapult, so... Yeah, look at that, completely cut off. Go ahead and uh, just do the same. <laughs> And you know what's funny is, even if I couldn't uh, continue war at this point, I probably have enough military power that um, just one unit per remaining city would be enough to keep the AI out of my hair, like the last Russian Empire. And when you're striking, you can keep one unit per city. Hmm. Oh, that's right. I built a road there. Okay. Screw cottages. We don't need cottages. We need killing. Even though cottages would be really nice right now. Oh. Well, now I'm not going to be able to watermill that. Maybe I should just chop the jungle, huh? Think about everything else later. There we go, chopping some actual infrastructure. Useful. Certainly have enough workers for it. Could make cannon now. And it could absolutely not matter whatsoever. Absolutely. Alright. City get. Achievement get. You be dead. Would you give me scientific method? Lol, no. <laughs> You'd rather die. Fine then. I'd rather kill you anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna wanna just drop a random city here. Probably after the bank. Here we go. You could build a settler in okay time. You two. You three. Should be about finishing up though. I'll get an 1800s finish. Late 1800s. Heck. <laughs> Sometimes people don't manage that on at normal emperor starts. Certainly if you're looking for that first emperor win, here you go viewers. Start on industrial and spam grenadiers and rifles, and you'll win. I was really expecting more out of the Cossacks, by the way. This has been rather trivial. Hey, I'm losing less money per turn. How about that? I think I'll just stay and surf them the rest of the game just because I can. <laughs> and it's like the first time it's ever been useful to me ever. So I might as well uh, milk it, have some fun using serfdom because it's not going to happen again in this uh, Challenger series probably. There are no other late era starts. Workshops, water mills. Could build a road to spread irrigation there. Oop, city comes out of revolt. It's starving. And it's costing more money. Pinch. Combat. Win. Alright. Chop. Need to make sure I was chopping and not water milling, because the thing interrupts you. Even when you instruct it to build the tile improvement, it like pretty improves. So you can't. Yeah, like here, I was building a workshop. Because I told it to chop, it's now wasting my time. And I have to tell it to workshop again. And if I don't remember next turn, I can just do it again and again. It's not the best. But we're almost done. Which is good, because I'm out of money, just about. <laughs> I have uh, 385 gold, I'm losing 199 gold a turn at 0%. Excellent. 
<laughs> but I do have 52% domination land. I'll actually cross the threshold with uh, my current holdings, so that's fine. We'll be, we'll be taking this W. And okay, works. Uh, water mills. Keep up those. I think I might just automate my workers. Yeah, let's do that. I'll spread irrigation here, and then I'll automate them. <laughs> There's no point any longer. This is over. If you don't have pinch, take it. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, I will go into strike the turn after next. <laughs> so, one turn before strike, we knock on the final enemy D8s. Appropriate. Very appropriate. Alright then. Game over, man. And now I'm once again one turn out of strike. Oh, we'll just uh, deficit this. Deleted. I delete more and more units because they don't do anything for me now. Go ahead and switch into nationhood. There we go. Oop, don't need to delete my great general medic. Actually, it wouldn't matter, strictly speaking. I'm not going to kill the English, or I'll win Conquest instead of Dom by accident. And I don't think um, conquering him is going to speed up my win at all. Or her, I guess. Who's left alive? Aw, oh, man, I left the hag alive. Let's well, slightly increase my score by uh, trading. Oh yeah, man. Communism would be the truth. And I could get to that with mercantilism and representation. Which I do get, like, every uh, city I capture benefits from merc rep, so... Again... Useful. Unlike my remaining military. Everyone, automate, automate, automate. <laughs> Until this game ends. 54% done. These cities will come out of revolt, that'll be a decent percentage. I'll get like a settler done, maybe in this city, put it here, build culture there, we got it, we win. More automation. <laughs> I got so many workers there. I could have sworn I uh, told all my cities to production automate. Well, let's do it. <laughs> Is at this point there's nothing I can do that's gonna speed me up. Oh, I captured the Apostolic Palace. How about that? Oh no, I want to go one north. I want to plant here. It covers a little bit more with its initial eight. <laughs> Just mass A for automate. Oh, the other thing I could do is emphasize food for a higher score. I don't think that matters a lot. Let's not bother. Oh, hey, I'm in strike. <laughs> Only negative 32 gold per turn. And here I thought I was in a bad way. Yeah, I've long since crossed the threshold of uh, maximum city cost or whatever. I guess because I deleted so many units, that helps. I'm still over twice the strength of my last opponent. <laughs> so even if she didn't like me, she wouldn't declare. And yes, as I strike, I'll lose lots of units, but not anything that is in a not every city will still have one unit remaining. So even if I lose all my workers, all my military, all of that, it's not going to matter because I'm still going to have more power. And she wouldn't declare anyway because she likes me. But something to note, and I could just. Uh, build wealth somewhere here. You know what? Just to say that I got stable and the fact that that settler is not going to finish before the game ends because I'm already at 61%. There you go. 
We are no longer in strike. And as these cities build more improvements, that's only going to get better. Um, is there any... Very interesting. There you go. I'll build Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Except for it won't finish before the game ends. <laughs> oh, jeez. 63%. Well, I might as well try to get it next turn. Looks like I can't hold my slider above 0% anyway. No. No, I cannot. Does it matter? No. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I just need a border pop. Oh no, Moscow just needs to come out of revolt. Still not enough? Oh. Next turn it is. Alright, we win! Late! I should have just attacked right away. I could have always stabilized if I needed to. The uh, faster growth curve of the hammers is just better. So that's something to bear in mind, and if I replay this, that's what I'll be doing. I'll just be going, uh straight into chopping grenadiers, because grenadiers with even just vassalage bonus would dominate on this map. I mean, barracks probably worth it with aggressive, so build barracks, get your uh, combat to pinch grenadiers chopped out, and then just start capturing workers in cities. Uh, run the slider at zero so that you accumulate some gold, so you can quickly get out of strike. You saw how quickly I got out of strike there. Even if I kept my units, I could have um, Gotten out of strike pretty quickly. So, yeah. This could have been executed better, but for a first attempt, could be worse. Oh, part of the reason, too, is these stupid islands. On a Pangea, really? Ocean islands? Ridiculous. So, that didn't con help me out either. I would have won probably... Um, that's You're probably talking good. 5%, 10% of the world's land right there. And... Uh, well over 10% with two of these stupid islands that nobody ever found or settled on, thank god. Wow. Yeah. I would have probably won a good 20-30 turn sooner, but I should win much sooner than that, so... Uh, a second attempt on this should do better. Rank 1 in everything but exports imports, which obviously since I've been mercantilism I wouldn't have. Man, I even win in GNP. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I have most of the top five cities. <laughs> I also have most of the wonders. Wonder how that happened. <laughs> Let's check out our kills and losses. I lost 24 grenadiers to kill 29 rifles, 18 grenadiers, 16 redcoats. I captured 12 workers. I uh, killed 10 catapults, 5 Cossacks. So, okay. We're talking a better than 3 to 1 kill ratio here with a unit you can chop out instantly. Very important to just go Grenadiers right away. And okay. That takes care of Challenge Game 6. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs up if you liked the video, and I will see you guys in the next game. The Me and Team, signing off.